Hey everyone, it's Miss Christina and welcome to STEAM at Home where I will be showing you different activities that are science, technology, engineering, art, and math based. So you don't have to change out of your comfy clothes or your PJs if you're still wearing pajamas right now because we will just be getting comfy and cozy while learning and having fun at the same time. So I hope you join me for today's activity. So for today's activity, I am going to show you how to spore print mushrooms. And before I get into that, I'm going to show you a mushroom. And here it is. And now we are going to talk about the different parts of it so we can fully understand what spore printing means later. All right, so this is obviously a mushroom, but of course not all mushrooms look like this. This is just a, or a certain one, kind of like this toadstool um, that everyone kind of like sees in like books, picture books. Um, but you can also see these um, around the woods or around you. Um, so here is their cap. That's the cap right there. It looks like their little hat, so it's called cap. And over here, when you kind of flip them over, you will see that they have kind of these like feathery things. They're called gills. And that's going to be a big part of our spore printing today. And over here, it's kind of like their stem. We call it the stalk of the mushroom. And sometimes there are mushrooms that kind of have this thing on their stalk, it kind of, it looks like it's a band around it and that's called a ring. It's called a ring. And under this, under the mushroom, when you pull them up, um, so imagine this is under a soil. So this is under that and those are called their threads. And this kind of helps with the growth of the lovely mushroom. So those are the different parts of the mushroom. One of my favorite things in the world. So before we get started with our spore printing, I will show you the life cycle of a mushroom. So here is the mushroom, right? But before it becomes this, it actually starts off as little spores. So you don't kind of like really see it. Sometimes it's like all like dusty, but um, they're spores, but I drew them kind of like, like raindrops because whenever, when you tap a mushroom, it releases that, it releases some type of spores, but I don't know how to draw that. So I drew, kind of like raindrops, just to like, just show you what they are, right? So these are the spores, right? So once you tap them or they release their spores, then they, of course, touch the soil or anywhere around, and then they start to form these threads, like kind of like under the, the mushroom from earlier that kind of look like roots, but they are referred to as threads or mycelium, mycelia. And after that, it starts to grow more of the threads and eventually starts growing a little nub of a stalk. And of course, after that, it starts to grow, 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 and eventually turns into a mushroom. So that looks like a little bulb right there. It hasn't fully opened yet. And once that it does, it, it'll, it will eventually turn into this beautiful mushroom with the cap all big and the gills showing. And from then on, this mushroom will also produce more spores around it and will make a lot of mushrooms. So that is the life cycle of a mushroom. So people do spore printing to um, identify different kinds of mushrooms. And today I'm going to show you how to do it. And it is very easy. So all you really need is a 
cardstock. I'm using white right now because the mushroom that I'm using is dark, but there are some mushrooms that are white or their spores will be white when, it, when released. So black cardstock will do best, but since I'm doing a brown mushroom, kind of like a dark mushroom, I'm just going to use a white one. And there's that card stock. You might want a sturdy paper for this because mushrooms are very moist. So you want something that just doesn't um, disintegrate. And the next is, of course, our mushroom. This is a mushroom cap. So you can find mushrooms everywhere, but I know sometimes it's hard to look for if it hasn't been um, raining or you just don't know where to look, right? But I promise you there are mushrooms out there um, just as long as they have a cap, especially for this activity, um, because it's the only way I know how to spore print is to use mushrooms that have caps so we can easily get their gills for spore printing. So I am using a big mushroom that I actually have laying around in the fridge that I got at the grocery store. So if you can find a mushroom and you want to do a spore printing activity, just go to your local grocery store. You can find a bunch of mushrooms there. Just make sure to kind of cut the stalk down close to its gills so it's nice and flat so we can flatten them and start our spore printing. So there's our mushroom. And the other thing that we need is a kind of a glass bowl to kind of um, secure the mushroom to keep it moist and humid inside so it can release the spores and transfer it on our cardboard. And we can do that right now. So take your mushroom and sprinkle some water around its gills. Make sure it's not soaking wet and place it on top of your cardstock and leave it overnight under a glass dome. So after leaving the mushroom inside the glass dome for 24 hours, just overnight, carefully open it up and you see all the moisture around the cardstock. Now we can open it up and there is our Spore print. Look how neat that is. You can definitely see the gills and everything. So that's spore printing. And with mycologists, they can easily identify what kind of mushroom it is just by looking at these. And since I am not a mycologist, I have no way of figuring that out. But good thing we have books about them so maybe we can identify them in the future. When you do this activity, make sure that the mushrooms that you're spore printing are safe and not poisonous or toxic because when little hands um, get a hold of them, they might put it in their mouth and that's probably not a good idea. So before you explore mushrooms outside, if you forage or grab some from your backyard or in the woods, make sure to look them up first using books or the internet to make sure that they are not dangerous. But it's totally okay to spore print all kinds of mushrooms. Just beforehand, make sure to read or do your research. Now that we've done our spore printing activity, I am going to show you some books that help me with my love for mushrooms and for this activity as well. So here is one that we have. It's called Good Mushrooms and Bad Toadstools by Alan Fowler. In this easy um, nonfiction book, it shows you 
like the things that I talked earlier about the life cycle of the mushrooms, the different kind of mushrooms. It is awesome for younger eaters, especially because it has simple sentences, these big realistic pictures that you can see, and it definitely is a good intro for younger eaters to explore mushrooms around them. So here, there, here they are, and here are some awesome mushroom pictures and their names and facts. So that's why I like this book a lot. The next book that I'm going to show you is The Mushroom Fan Club by Elise Gravel. So this nonfiction book that looks like a graphic novel inside is one of my favorites. Not only is she one of my favorite authors and illustrators, but in this specific book about mushrooms, she makes the mushrooms look really fun and not intimidating at all. So there they are, some mushrooms that like i said earlier have gills or spines or pores instead of the ones from earlier she talks about spores and she also features different kinds of mushrooms that also look very cool like this lactarius indigo this one actually produces kind of like this milky substance from their caps which is awesome so here are some of course, she's gonna have facts and interesting um, pictures that goes along with them to make it comical and also very engaging to readers of all ages. So here it is, definitely check this one out. It is amazing. And this is actually the mushroom that I drew, the fly agaric. And yeah, they are toxic. And I just told you about toxic mushrooms and this is definitely one of them. So definitely check this book out. So this next book is actually one of my favorites now. It just came out this month, April. And it's this big book. It's called The Fungarium by Katie Scott and Esther Gaia. This book is just amazing. When you open it up, it's huge, but that's okay because it is so pretty. It is visually appealing and it feels like you're in a museum. Here you go. And it's so big, but that's okay. This book may be geared towards middle graders and higher because of the content it may be a little too complex for the younger readers but if you have younger readers that just want to look at the beauty of mushrooms and to just kind of see all different kinds of mushroom in a realist in realistic illustrations definitely check this book out and at the same time you can read all about them if you're an adult or an older um, reader, this is something that you would want in your own bookshelves. So here we are, lichens as well, not just mushrooms, but lichens, yeast, all that stuff. You can definitely frame some of these pictures as well. Not only is it educational, but it is also captivating with all of these illustrations. I just love it so much. So. Here it is, here is the Fungarium. It is beautiful. So I know those books that I showed you earlier are kids books. You can definitely find them in our children's department, but there are some books also that are adult books about mushrooms. For instance, this one, The Mushroom Book, How to Identify, Gather, and Cook Wild Mushrooms and Other Fungi by Thomas Lesso and Adele Conti and Gary Linkoff. So this is a great book for, I feel like, all ages. You can definitely read it with your younger kids, your middle readers, your teenagers, or just for your grandparent, just anyone, because it is full of these amazing facts, or if it is too complex for you, at least there are little um, interesting tidbits 
on the picture so you can easily follow. It's not too complicated. The words may be complicated because they're just those big words. It's hard to pronounce, but no worries because they put the kind of like their nicknames or whatever by it. I think this is very helpful, especially if you're trying to forage some mushrooms outside and you kind of want to figure out um, their type, if they're dangerous, toxic, or poisonous, or whatever, this might be a good one too. This is very scientific, of course, very educational. So this is something that you want to look through if you are trying to do projects about mushrooms or just learn about mushrooms in a more in-depth way. So this is definitely something to have. So last but not the least, an adult book that I actually own, this is my personal um, book, is the National Audubon Society Field Guide to Mushrooms of North America. So this little tiny book is packed with, oh my goodness, all types of mushrooms. There's maybe like over a thousand of, thousands of these mushrooms in this with real pictures, and it will definitely help you identify what they are if you see them um, out in the woods, in your backyard, in your front yard. This is definitely the guide for mushroom hunting or just to, you know, learn and study what kind of mushrooms you have around you. And all these are kind of the, the pages where you can, um, figure out what they are with their descriptions, their range lookalikes and all that stuff. Because I know there are some mushrooms that kind of look similar, but actually they're not. So this is a great book to have around with you when you're out looking for mushrooms and to identify them. So definitely have one of these around you if you're a budding mycologist or if you're just super interested in mushrooms and the different types of them, definitely have this. The National Audubon Society Field Guide to Mushrooms. Now that we've spore printed um, learned about the life cycle of a mushroom, identified um, the different parts of a mushroom. Now we can just go on out into the woods and look for some if you want to. Um, just make sure that you're being safe out there and don't forget to check those books out at the Homewood Public Library. You, can, you guys can come in from 10 a.m. to 5.30 or easily place a hold on them through our library's website. So come see us and enjoy learning about these fun fungi. Y'all have a great day. Bye!